Hey Virgo gang, what's up? Welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. That's me, my name's Annie. We're gonna read your tarot cards here today. We got them popping already. Um, oh yeah, we're definitely gonna read this message. Um, okay, uh, you guys are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. This is optional advice or guidance, so please only take away what resonates. Um, we're gonna start with love and then we're gonna transition into money, career, work stuff. All right, I think that's my general spiel. <laughs> I have to rush because I want to pick up on the energy here. All right, huge card of transformation. We're using True Heart Intuitive Tarot. Beautiful deck. Um, yeah, and I mean, I think this uh, depiction of the death card, which is very strongly related to Scorpios, so any Scorpios in your life, Scorpio season, it really does kind of show the, the metaphor of what the death card represents, which is transformation, death into rebirth. So it's almost like you're coming out a brand new you. I, some of you actually may be coming out with um, uh, your, your sexuality or sharing some sort of important uh, part of your identity that you've kept concealed or hidden. And it might even be, and at one point in time, it may have even been hidden to you. There may have been something that you didn't even realize about yourself. And maybe some of you have been doing some internal work. Maybe you've been going to therapy or counseling. Or again, maybe it's just more spiritual. Maybe you've been meditating more. And all of a sudden, there's this... I, I get liberation from this. It's like I don't have to carry this heavy cloak around about who I used to be or who I thought people needed me to be. Um, there's a very strong connection to Libra here, too. It's funny. I'm wanting to say Libra, but you guys are Virgo in theory. So you might be dealing with someone who's cuspy between Libra and Scorpio. You come out on top. Like, oh, I just, oh my God, these cards are incredible. I am happy for you, Virgo. This is so nice to see. Um, there's something, I'm almost getting the idea of quenching your thirst or refreshing. Um, the idea of shedding the, the skin, if you will, you know, the snake skin, however you want to say it, and emerging as this, you're the same person, yet you're changed internally. It's starting to show externally. People are noticing you now. I'm almost getting this idea, I'm thirsty for this because I've been denying myself this for so long. And maybe it's just recognizing your self-worth. I, there is even like this idea of sort of raising a glass to yourself, raising a toast to yourself. Um, some of you may have even kicked an issue uh, if you've ever struggled with addiction, specifically alcohol addiction. Some of you may have reached some sort of important milestone where you, you understand the reasons behind why something happened in, in the way it did in your life. And because you've reached this sort of, uh, like this high point of, I even want to say like spiritual knowledge, uh, yeah, it's almost like drink among the, among the gods or drink among, uh, I, don't, I don't know, so there's something very spiritual about this card. I apologize, I'm not being uh, more eloquent. But I almost get the idea of making up for lost time because I've been this way or this person for so long. Now that I'm not and I'm free, and, and I will say this brings you incredible happiness. In addition to freedom, possibly creativity, there's something about being this new person or recognizing that I can be this way if I choose something different. This feels so good. I want to make up for lost time and do more of it. Um, and, and I will say the opposite, too. Just make sure that doesn't breed some sort of new addiction, even, you know, if it's addiction to shopping, because whatever, you know, you lost weight and now you're loving your body or whatever, or vice versa, right? I'm, I'm not saying it has to be a weight issue thing. But do you understand what I mean? Make sure that doesn't breed some sort of new addiction to spending money or, or the opposite, you know, being too, um, you, you know what I mean. So then this goes into the Empress. This is incredible. This is such a good reading. Um, the Empress is Venus energy. So uh, again, queen of her career, but also sort of Mother Earth type energy. Um, very strongly related to Taurus. And then you also have uh, the King of Earth. So that's what I mean. You're kind of turning heads. People are noticing. I was going to read this as romantic and I will continue to do so. However, I will say if you are looking for a job, there's something new where you've like revamped your resume or you're, you've decided, you know, I used to be a teacher, but now you know what? I want to be a graphic designer. So I'm going to tailor my resume to make me appeal to that type of clientele or whatever. And I'm not saying you have to lie, but even if it comes down to really emphasizing what you want to do versus, you know, the skills you have and you can do them, it's like put at the top of the resume what you want because you may actually end up manifesting it as that sort of dream career or, again, being able to study under someone who's already done it. Maybe you won't emerge, you know, as, you know, getting the, the vice president role, but it's possible, very, very Virgo message here, it's possible you may end up not interning because, you know, some of you are not interested in doing that, but... Getting some sort of position where you can serve while learning from your mentor, and as you acquire that knowledge, you can help to share it with others, right? There's a lot of Libra energy here, too. I'm wanting to say something with fashion or, or and we are in Libra season, too. 
uh, something with fashion design or aesthetic, you know, painting, sewing, any type of skilled craft that has a particularly visual aspect to it. That seems to be a, a really important predominant message here too. Um, yeah, you've made peace with the past, right? The dove, the ace of cups, the card of, you know, death, past cycles and endings. You've made peace with something, Virgo, and again, you've emerged as like the butterfly, and, and whether you feel it now or not, other people are noticing, and, and they're, they're expressing some sort of interest in you. Again, this could be someone wanting to recruit you for their team, or if you're, you know, single and looking, this person would be willing to make a very big offer, the King of Pentacles. Typically, he's my husband card, or, uh, you know, head of the household, male or female, right? It doesn't matter per se. I will say, though, if you're not looking to get, you know, involved with someone who's already married or already taken, make sure that you've kicked that habit or however you want to say it, that you're looking for people who are at your level. Um, because whether you realize it or not, the Empress is above the King of, of uh, Discs <laughs> or the King of Earth to avoid confusion. <laughs> um, but she's Major Arcana, right? She's a big, heavy player. She's a heavy hitter in this. So the King of Pentacles, you know, he's... Um, completely respectable in his own right, but I almost see this as this person needs to serve you. So you may be coming more comfortable with asking of others, with delegating, with, again, bringing people on board who, who you can love and support, but also they need to bring something to the table too. It can't be the reverse, and I feel like for a lot of you, that may be a part of you that you're breaking free from sort of the shackle of, uh, you know, the idea of, you know, sixth house Virgo type things, the idea of like being the slave to the system or the slave to the partner. There's a, a nice little role reversal. And it's not to say that you've become sort of some slave driver. You know, the Empress, again, ruled by Venus. She, she rules with love and justice and fairness and equality. Um, but make sure you're getting that from other people. Uh, if some of you are single and looking, um, it's possible you may attract an earth sign in the coming months, another uh, Virgo, a Taurus, or a Capricorn. This is a especially strong Taurian energy, the Taurus gang out there. Um, someone may gift you some sort of uh, piece of jewelry, a necklace, a bracelet, a ring, whatever. Um, if you have been with the same person for a long time, uh, this could certainly be proposals. It could even be family planning. Whatever this is, this feels like long-term... Um, establishment or further establishment depending on what your relationship that status is of of something that wants to continue to grow into the future the idea of securing our legacy together i really really like these cards and i really love these cards too i i feel that you probably went through some sort of painful time but again it's like that's the old story that's the past so like drink from this fresh cup you know like it goes down so smooth right because this is like a new life you're creating for yourself um, some of you, hold on, before I go into that message. Hmm. So I, I hope this message comforts. It's a pretty deep, serious message. So I just, disclaimer, if you're super sensitive, maybe earmuffs on this one. Some of you, I am understanding if you already in a, are in a relationship and you've been trying to conceive, and I'm not predicting this to be very clear. Again, in the past, some of you may have struggled with pregnancy or, or lost a child. Um, I don't, I, you know, I can only read what the cards are telling me. There's a greater reason why. And again, that's not me saying it. That's like something from the universe. Um with the page of wands, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. And I mean, I'm not here to justify it because obviously that's, that's a very sad situation, but it is coming up in your reading with a lot of hopeful cards. So I don't know if this means that, you know, you can conceive at another date or, or something that's going to shift your focus where that doesn't become such a, uh, a strong desire. I'm not sure what it is, but the universe is confirming to me, like essentially like share the message because there's, there's more to be revealed here. Or there's, I don't know, potential for something new. So don't get tripped up in the confusion of why us and why me and how could this have happened. I, I don't mean to be rude or insensitive, but that's almost a waste of the energy. It's sort of about accepting it and moving forward and being very strong, right? Um, and if anything, that might have been an experience that actually bonded you guys together. Um, or, or again, it could have put a wedge in the relationship, but I would say even if that was the case, over time, you realize that by communicating your feelings, by having emotional conversations and expressions of emotion, it actually made you stronger in the long run. I, I know this is very specific. It's not for everyone out there, but anyway. 
Some of you have just gotten a tattoo or you're, you're going to get a tattoo. I, I see that. Um, tell me a little bit more about this. Mm -mm. Could, yeah, it could be another Virgo. What is he shining his lantern on? Or a Cancer? Mm -mm. Yeah, and for some of you uh, thinking about um, starting a family, you may start to do so in Scorpio season. This can be like mommy-daddy vibes, and the Ace of Cups can be sort of, you know, adding... Adding a child to the mix, uh, you know, the womb, the cup kind of uh, looks like that. Yeah, look at you. This could be fatherhood is, is a, a beautiful blessing, a ten of cups, or it could be something career related. And with the empress, I would I would say that there's a very good chance of that. And I mean, who's to say it can't be both, right? Some of you may end up working as emotional counselors. Some of you may end up working with expecting mothers, right? <clears throat> x-rays. <laughs> Some of you may be x-ray technicians, I don't know. I don't know why that's coming up. Uh, in terms of love, what, what can I share with uh, my Virgos out there? Messages for their best and highest good. Yeah, I would say keep your eye on those earth signs. If you're not with one now, I think you're, you're certainly attracting one. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. You have a choice, Virgo. <clears throat> Um, there's going to be things every now and then that come up that trigger you and, and make you question yourself. That almost feels like devil energy to me, like uh, leaning more into your shadow side. You know, the dark versus the light, you have them all within you, right? You know, we are beautifully complex human beings. There's going to be things that come up in life, you know, uh, that do trigger you or get you to look back on the past and wonder kind of the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, did I do it right? You can linger on that and, and again, put yourself in the past, you know, questioning yourself, or you can just accept it and say, you know what, I started fresh. So yes, there were issues there and maybe part of that have, has left a scar on my heart, but I choose to see things through an optimistic lens. And more importantly, I choose to take action towards my passions. I choose to move forward. I choose to rise to the occasion. I choose to be brave, you know, to practice strength and courage, to go after things that, that make my heart beat, right? The queen of passion, the queen of wands. Um, I really like that. I also think there's potentially someone here who's interested in you. Um, it could be a female fire sign. If not, more than likely, I think they see you as the queen of wands, Virgo. But for some reason, they feel either rejected or they question if they could have you. Um, it, I don't know. Again, there might be something here with a husband. It could be an ex-husband who, who looks back and regrets. Again, kind of up to you if you want to consider that. If it's going to confuse you and muddy the waters, I would say, you know, be, Drink from the fresh cup. Uh, I think there's a reason why the universe is gifting you this new beautiful opportunity. Um, again, more for my single Virgos. It could be that someone is expressing interest in you. Um, oh, okay. That's not necessarily true. Uh, let me finish that thought. It could be someone is, is interested in you but not moving forward with it because they feel like you'll reject them. Or they just, this person questions their... Um, they don't have the same confidence or they they put you on a pedestal to be this amazing person. And I'm not saying you're not, but it's like they have a lot of self-doubt. That's what's stopping this person. Others of you, you may be happily married, but you may actually be being pursued by someone who is also married. Or if they're single and I don't know, there's definitely an established couple here and potentially the makings of a third party. So if that's you, you may be considering, am I really happy being the other woman or the side woman or, you know, man, female, whatever, male, female, doesn't matter the gender so much. Or it could be that you're already with someone and who knows, maybe this person is too, but they're making offers to you where you're kind of like... I don't know, you might be tempted here, but at the same time, I think it's, I don't know, you're, it's making you question what you already have and with whom your passion lies. Um, of course, that's not for everyone, but it, it, that may also be something in your career too. If you have options to go back and forth between jobs and someone's, you know, wanting to keep you full time, you may be like, oh, but I, you know, I'm, am I going to lose steam here? It's like, you got to keep your your flames of passion alive. You know, you have to recreate some, some sexual chemistry. But for a lot of you, I think this person is quite redeeming. It's just you may have lost the, you know, the zest, the zhuzh. Uh, so it might just uh, be saying reintroduce, you know, creative ways of expressing your love, you know, in the bedroom or wherever. Um, yeah, if you're with a person and you love them tremendously, but the passion is there, this is just saying you need to mix it up. You need to try a new strategy, a new approach. The king of discs can be quite... Um, 
traditional in his approach. So, you know, sometimes the same thing doesn't work after five years, right? You know, you get, you get, you gotta used to it. You gotta mix it up. You gotta keep it creative. The thing is, you still got it. You're still looking good. So own that, own that power, own that confidence. And hopefully this person can step up and, and be as confident. But I think you might need to be gentle with them or be patient because, you know, I would say with these cards, it's taken you a while to get here, right? Sometimes it's not a Cinderella story. Sometimes we have to go through trials and tribulations to, to become the best versions of ourselves. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's, let's switch to money. Or money, work, career, finances, anything that wants to come up in that arena. We'll see what we get. <clears throat> what can I tell Virgo about work-life stuff? What's coming up? Six of Cups. Aww. Aww. <laughs> this is kind of... Hang with me. Hang with me. I'm going to get it. But my first reaction is, oh, someone's sad. Someone may have quite literally lost a, a friend, uh, especially an animal. Some of you may have had to put a, a pet down or something. Um, or this could be someone in your life who's just going through it. They're really sad. Yeah, this person just can't pull themselves up. It, it, it seems like they've encountered a lot of obstacles and struggles. Um, try as they might to kind of put their best foot forward. Their mind always wanders back to the past. And I think this is someone who re is feeling like things will just never be as good as they used to be. So therein lies the problem. This person definitely needs to um, be more optimistic. Um, and you, you know, if this is you, Virgo, you will have good and bad days. I'm not here to say that you're going to do a 180 overnight, right? Maybe that that death card, that transformation. Maybe this is you're in the process, right? You know, healing is a very personal process. Be good to yourself. Be patient with yourself. Cut yourself some slack. And also important to remember, don't feel like you have to do it alone, right? Scorpio is an interpersonal sign. It, it doesn't do things on its own, right? It's polar opposite Taurus, right? The merging of, of, of people, of bodies, of finances, right? The, you know, sex, right? Sex and death. We lump those together with Scorpio because it, there's duality there. Anyway. Um, I don't know what this has to do with your money. Some of you may have just gotten a job working at like a clinic and, and I, or, or something to do with grievance or consoling people. You may work in any line of therapy or counseling. You know, you might literally be a vet. Something where you sort of have to help people transition. Uh, it, it's a very heavy job. And so even if this isn't your personal loss, you may be going home at the end of the day and questioning if you're strong enough to be in this field. Um, and again, that's that's very personal. I can't tell you yes or no. You have to feel it in your gut. I would say you have a, an, I'm hearing the word innate, an innate strength that you possess, especially if you have strong Scorpio in your chart. Double down on that, Virgo. If you're a, a Scorpio rising or, you know, I don't know, a Scorpio moon or something like that, you have a unique and innate ability to help people with matters that, that they do plunge very deep. Uh, they trigger us from very deep, probably hurt, wounded places. Um, so don't underestimate your ability. You know, it might be shocking at first. You may feel like a fish out of water. But more or less, if any of this is making sense to you guys, I would say it's almost like this is, in a, in a sense, I, I'm wanting to say like your sole purpose or part of your, uh, oh, did you hear that? Oh, ding. Oh, I got the chills. Ah, oh, I love it. Okay. Thank you, Spirit. That, that, that helps me. Um, it's part of your soul's journey to fill this role for someone. And again, maybe it's not even career wise for some of you. It absolutely is. It's like, you're a healer. Uh, you're an intuitive. You, you might be psychic. You may help people with, you know, tarot cards or astrology or something that again, it might be a little bit occult esque. but if it's not, it might just be, you know, grief counseling. And, and I think part of the message here, it's not that you're doing anything wrong. In fact, I think you're making a significant difference or impact in other people's lives. But it's important to remember that you do need to go home and protect your own energy. So it sounds so um, uh, insensitive to say, but it's almost like you have to go home and shower and like wash away that energy and, and hit reset. Because you're right, this job is so deep and so heavy, something about it, it, it could potentially really weigh on your psyche. So you need to develop a healthy not coping mechanism, but more or less a healthy routine where you detach yourself emotionally, uh, energetically, spiritually from kind of the heaviness of what's going on. Some of you may work with people who are in uh, ICU or um, something, uh, childhood illness, something like that. Um, 
What's interesting is some of you may have grown into this role because you experienced something in your own youth that was very difficult. And so it's almost like it's like your superpower. But it isn't that so true that, you know, your superpower is also your, you know, fill in the blank. Um, you guys know what I'm saying. Your weakness, your vulnerability, right? Like most superheroes, right? So there's something incredible that you could potentially do, but I think you're really questioning, am I strong enough to do it? Like at the end of the day, I've given away all my energy and grief and counseling to others. Do I have anything left in my bowl? And that's the key, right? You have to have something left for you at the end of the day. So who is your rock? Who is your person that you rely on? Um, and I will say too, if, if this has been your career for a long time and you're burnt out, um, you do need to be really honest and real with yourself about understanding that if this is taking its toll on you mentally, then you owe it to yourself, to your body, to your physical, spiritual, mental health to take a break or again, to reassess how you can do this in a way where you don't feel depleted at the end of the day. I almost see this as like an energy charge, this little rainbow. Maybe some of you uh, do crystal work or cleanse your energy with crystals or whatever that is for you. Um, cause this, this could be a potentially, um, more than more de more than delicate. What is a good word for it? Um, beyond exhausting. I, I don't even have the right word to describe it right now. I apologize. But there's heaviness looming in some sort of career that you're either considering or you're currently in. So again, you have to be real with yourself because at the end of the day, your body is your temple. So first and foremost, you've got to take care of yourself. And so if you're in a job that's challenging your own health in any way, again, we, we have to like restructure it because that that can't go on uh, much longer. Nine of Swords says we're kind of at our peak anxiety, so we have to sort of break this down and reassess, reanalyze, Gemini, right? The duality of our thoughts, what we actually need versus what we want, and, and again, what's healthy for us. Uh, pet therapy. Have any of you guys considered pet therapy? Uh, and I mean just for your own personal youth, you know, sh or, uh, use, sorry. I just said youth, interesting. Um... Yeah, gosh, this is such a heavy message, but it's also really beautiful. Like some of you may work in, in some sort of uh, program or hospital or institution where it's like, uh, what do you call that? Like your last wish. You understand what I mean? Like the Make-A-Wish Foundation type vibes. Uh, you may get a job with some sort of program. Um, others of you, you may actually choose to have a pet because there's something very soothing and therapeutic and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you can come home and be with your pet or who knows, maybe you can bring your pet to work. Yeah. Hey, spirit likes that. The sun. Uh, make sure you're getting outside, getting some sunlight, getting some vitamin D. Yeah, absolutely. Take care of your body. Um, cause some of you have been through the ring or some of you, and I'm not predicting this by any means, but some of you may have, again, possibly in your youth had some sort of near death experience and it was like a very close call. And so there was like a, you know, I was chosen to, to move past this. I was chosen to not, to not die, right. To grow, to become something bigger, to, to use my energy in a way that serves, you know, humanity or people on earth, even in small ways. So it's saying own that responsibility and that importance. But with that comes a responsibility to yourself to nurture your own seed, to nurture your own body. You have a lot of heavy sword energy. So again, if you're not feeling this way, and I hope you're not, but um, if you're not feeling this way, this may be the clients you're working with or the clientele. You may be helping families who have uh, people who uh, have uh, drug addiction or abuse centers or something like that. You have to be a fortress of strength, first and foremost, to yourself. But I, whatever it is, the, the job title doesn't matter, guys, but I see a lot of you getting into some... Some sort of career where you are making profound difference in the life of other people, but with that, you, you're a pillar of strength, but I think there's something about needing to reground your energy so you can separate work life from personal life, because really it doesn't need to be all one and the same, and shouldn't, I, I will say that. Um, there may be a crossover of boundaries here, and I think, uh, you know, very Virgo-esque, right? You know, the lines and the order and the data. You need to have a very separate... I don't know, there needs to be separation from what's currently going on because otherwise it's going to blend together and it's just not healthy. Um, I wish I could tell you more about money, but this this is the message that kind of came out. Um, am I allowed to know anything else here? Helping people cross over or tr uh, transition into something else. You may be working with teens who are... Um, uh, what is a good way, like tr transitioning uh, genders or something about, 
especially something with children, with the, with the sun and the six of cups. Uh, it could indicate something from the past, but with the sun, it typically it's a very beautiful card. It's typically growth from the past, um, growth issues, or yeah, I, I don't know what that is. If you want to do it, you will do it and you will knock it out of the park. But the key to this is you have to want to do it. If you're complacent, if you're whatever, if you're overwhelmed, if you're, oh my God, I don't want this. How do I get out? Then don't. I almost see this as a very positive message of if you're feeling called to plan an exit strategy, that's for a reason. So you don't need to hold on to something because it used to make you happy in the past. Spirit says you're allowed to grow. You're allowed to change. You, you need to honor your self-expression and what's going to bring you light and joy and happiness. For some of you, helping people through dark times brings you joy and happiness. And yet, you know, this could have just been a one-off too. Of you may have had just a really brutal situation occur at, at work and it made you question some things. Again, if you, generally speaking, you still like what you do and you're getting by and all, you know, all the good things... Understand that that's just like a brick in, in your pathway, right? It, it's helping you learn or be exposed to something that, oof, that was a lot. I, it might be the exception more than uh, the rule. So take it in stride, you know. Again, I mean, these are very personal messages. But anyway, one on this Ten of Swords. Some of you need to take flight. Some of you may end up, I don't know, taking a long distance trip or something. I don't know if you're traveling for work or doing something with, I don't know, like airline transportation. I don't know what that is. Um, something, something to do with airplanes or flight. I'm hearing the lyrics to Blackbird, the Beatles song, take these broken wings and learn to fly. I think that's what you do for other people. Ooh, interesting. The gentleman, the gentleman holding a rose. So some of you may be at this really peak point in your career where you're you're loving what you're doing and you're making a ton of money, but the one thing that it feels like missing is in a relationship. Again, I, I would be very cognizant of, of where your thoughts go because what you think and what you believe is what you manifest. So if, if you are saying to yourself, well, I'm kick-ass at work and I love this, but I'm always going to be single, well, then you're always going to be single. It's like you have to understand that, you know, Life happens in cycles and chapters, right? We already know this. So Ten of Swords says there's an ending of a very difficult uh, chapter. But if what you're looking to on the horizon is this guy, you know, this could be someone new. Um, or again, a, a new employer, a new boss. I am going to stick with a, a gender on this one because it is being shown as gentleman, right? Um, some of you may have gone through a rough divorce. Some of you may have lost a spouse, right? You know, life is not always sunshine and roses. It comes with heavy moments. But if anything, this this is telling me that you are equipped to deal with this heavier energy. It might not be your joy and your delight, but again, it's almost like there's there's a divine order. There's divine reason to this, even though you may not sometimes understand it, but meditate on it. See if you can deconstruct and understand these, these thoughts that are going on in your head. What about the gentleman? What am I needing to tell them? If you're a, some of you may end up dating someone, uh, especially if you're a nurse. I'm seeing people in like scrubs or something at like, you know that, that like main desk when you're in the hospital? You know, where they do all the paperwork and whatever. Sorry, I'm not a nurse. I don't know what things are called. But I see you. I see someone, like, flirting with you in their scrubs. <laughs> I, I, don't, I know. That's so random. Obviously, it's not for all of you. And, I mean, who knows? Maybe you're the patient, right? I, I don't know. Yeah. Someone's keeping you in their heart. Oh, and you're doing the same for someone, too. Yeah, a, a lot of you have lost something or someone that, that you love quite a bit. Um, yeah, I think the universe is just trying to let you know, like, things are going to get better. It's not all doom and gloom, even though it may feel like it. Um, yeah, it's, it's darkest before dawn, right? That's sort of what I'm wanting to say. Um, all right, I'm going to leave you with that, Virgo. Um, please remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, share with your friends. Um, and if you want to book a personal reading, uh, hit me up, uh, on my email or you can, uh, purchase via Etsy as well. Other than that, thanks for joining me today. Bye, Virgo gang.